hello hello welcome welcome to day 235 of our bible in a year challenge my name is sandra i'm going to be your host for today welcome we are committed to reading our bibles in a year with just less than 20 minutes daily read time yes you heard me right just less than 20 minutes daily read time please kindly go ahead right now subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on facebook on instagram and on tiktok at sandra boyo aruleba let's get started day 235 august 23rd 2022 365 days bible reading old testament second chronicles 18 28 to 34 second chronicles 19 second chronicles 20 new testament first corinthians 15 35 to 49 psalms and proverbs psalm 102 verse 12 to 17 old testament niv version second chronicles 18 28 to 34 ahab killed at ramoth gilead so the king of israel and jehoshaphat king of judah went up to ramoth gilead the king of israel said to jehoshaphat i will enter the battle in disguise but you wear your royal robes so the king of israel disguised himself and went into the battle now the king of aram had ordered his chariots commanders do not fight with anyone small or great except the king of israel when the chariot commanders saw jehoshaphat they thought this is a king of israel so they turned to attack him but jehoshaphat cried out and the lord helped him god drew them away from him for when the chariot commander saw that he was not the king of israel they stopped pursuing him but someone drew, drew his bow at random and hit the king of israel between the breastplate and the scale armor the king told the chariot driver wheel around and get me out of the fighting i have been wounded all day long the battle raged and the king of israel propped himself up in his chariot facing the arameans until evening then at sunset he died second chronicles 19 1 to 11 when jehoshaphat king of judah returned safely to his palace in jerusalem jehu the seer the son of hanani went out to meet him and said to the king should you help the wicked and love those who hate the lord because of this the wrath of the lord is on you there is however some good in you for you have rid the land of the asherah poles and have set your heart on seeking god Jehoshaphat appoints judges. Jehoshaphat lived in Jerusalem and he went out again among the people from Beersheba to the hill country of Ephraim and turned them back to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. He appointed judges in the land in each of the fortified cities of Judah. He told them, Consider carefully what you do because you are not judging for mere mortals, but for the Lord who is with you whenever you go give a verdict. Now let the fear of the Lord be on you. Judge carefully, for with the Lord our God there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. In Jerusalem also, Jehoshaphat appointed some of the Levites, priests and heads of Israelite families to administer the law of the Lord and to settle disputes, and they lived in Jerusalem. He gave them these orders, you must serve faithfully and wholeheartedly in the fear of the Lord. In every case that comes before you from your people, you will live in the cities where the bloodshed or other concerns of the law, commands, decrees, or regulations. You are to warn them not to sin against the Lord, otherwise his wrath will come on you and your people. Do this and you will not sin. Amariah, the chief priest, will be over you in any matter concerning the Lord, and Zebadiah, son of Ishmael, the leader of the tribe of Judah, will be over you in any matter concerning the king, and the Levites will serve as officials before you. Act with courage, and may the Lord be with those who do well. Second Chronicles 20, verse 1 to 37, Jehoshaphat defeats Moab and Ammon. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of them Meonites 
came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar, that is En Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed the fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you. Our God did not drive out the our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now, here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you will not allow to invade when they came from Egypt, so they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do but our eyes are on you all the men of judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the lord then the spirit of the lord came on jahaziel son of zechariah the son of benaiah the son of jael the son of mataniah a levite and descendant of asaph as he stood in the assembly he said listen King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophet, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. The Ammonites and Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka where they praised the Lord. This is why it is called the valley of Baraka to this day. Then 
led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets. The fear of God came on all the surrounding kingdoms when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel, and the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. The end of Jehoshaphat's reign. So Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king of Judah, and he reigned in Jerusalem 25 years. His mother's name was Azubah, daughter of Shilhi. He followed the ways of his father Asa and did not stray from them. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. The high places, however, were not removed and the people still had not set their hearts on the God of their ancestors. The other events of Jehoshaphat's reign from beginning to end are written in the annals of Jehu son of Hanani, which are recorded in the book of the kings of Israel. Later, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, made an alliance with Ahaziah, king of Israel, whose ways were wicked. He agreed with him to construct a fleet of trading ships. After these were built at Ezion, Geber, Eliezer, son of Dodavahu of Maresha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you did because you have made an alliance with Ahaziah, the Lord will destroy what you have made. The ships were wrecked and were not able to set sail to trade. New Testament NIV version, 1 Corinthians 15, 35 to 49, the resurrection body. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed, he gives its own body. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh. Animals have another birds another and fish another there are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies but the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another the sun has one kind of splendor the moon another and the sun, stars another and star differs from star in splendor so will it be with the resurrection of the dead the body that is sown is perishable it is raised in perishable it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in natural a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam a living a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man is of heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 102, verse 12 to 8 to 17. But you, Lord, sit enthroned forever. You renown, your renown endures through all generations. You will raise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come, for her stones are dear to your servants. Her very dust moves them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord, or the kings of the earth will revere your glory. For the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory he will respond to the prayer of the destitute he will not despise their plea amen glory to god please if you're here and you like to make jesus your personal lord and savior kindly repeat this prayer after me say lord jesus i confess my sins and i ask for your forgiveness please come into my heart as my lord and savior take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for helping me, for saving me, and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Kindly go ahead, send us an email at salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new faith walk. Glory to God. Email address again, salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember right now, go ahead, share this video with your friends, family, and loved ones. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aruleba. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Thank you for being here. I love you. Bye.